we've had some questions recently related to the yellow tangs that are in this reef here. We answered those. We had two or three different people ask us about the HLLE, which is the head and lateral line degradation that's on the yellow tangs here. Those, those tangs came from Dr. Chad Callen at Oceanic Institute several years ago. There were lots of different nuances, like any new aquaculture, even the copper band butterflies from Courtney O's and his team. They're a brand new fish. They've made it through the first phase. You have F1s. Not everything is perfect. Clownfish through the years, we'd have short gills when we breed those and those fish really aren't as desirable as what we would call a perfect looking specimen. But the tangs especially, and I'm gonna call it a dietary deficiency. If you can get the fish that lives in the environment that you're breeding, like the yellow tangs, and place them into an outdoor tank with temperature control, great sunlight, and great natural algal that's growing on this culture tank that's in sunlight, they're gonna get a lot of that natural balance of, of different things they need, carotene and, and just the, the overall spectrum of algae. We're feeding these guys the nori sheets every single day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. They still haven't cleaned up completely, but if you look at the nasa tang, the purple tang, the gem tang, we have some uh, tomonensis tangs in here, maybe a white tail bristle tooth, the coal tangs that have been here for several years. They're in perfect condition, no lateral line disease, and all of those fish actually are wild collected and have been in perfect condition all the way through. Think about the animals because that's the goal. You're going to keep animals alive. We're growing to keep going in the direction of as much aquaculture corals as possible. We have a lot here in the building and there is some imported corals that come in from Australia and a very well regulated fishery in Australia. There's corals that also come in from Indonesia that is very well regulated as well. And there's a, a ton of mariculture corals coming from many locations globally that are farmed on trays and in different methods in the natural ocean on plugs let's call it and then those are shipped across the world under CITES permit that are completely and hundred percent legitimate and safe for commerce safe and better for the environment but again a regulated well-managed fishery is the key with any wild-caught organisms you have a tremendous amount of marine ornamental aquaculture that's going on between Oceanic Institute, between ORA, Biota and Palau. You've got all sorts of great aquacultures, Matt Witt and Rich, coral aquaculture, obviously worldwide corals, uh, Top Shelf Aquatics, a ton of them, SDC's doing it. Quality Marine has their marine ornamental aquaculture program going on in California. You know, people keep reinvesting. Obviously, Rising Tide is a really big one that we support. Rising Tide is a great organization that's helping and an open source to support the scientists doing the research to develop the new species like Courtney O's with the copper band butterflies. And there's just a, a lot of people doing this. Karen Britton with the Mast Angels. There's just so many people involved and this is great for our trade. Well, it's the benefit of the animals, which ultimately is to the benefit of our client, our customer, who is typically an owner, not necessarily an aquarist who wants a beautiful thriving coral reef aquarium or jellyfish aquarium or really high-end freshwater aquarium in their home, their office, their public location. We try to determine what is their goal and deliver in this symbiotic relationship for growing natural environmental marine aquariums mostly that are successful, will stand the test of time for years and years to come. We changed the dynamics of the feed in here and placed on our uh, automated feed systems, which is also administered for the DOS. So right now, that Magic Chef Home Depot refrigerator is right there. We're feeding in there the pack pods, arctic pods, roto feeds, mice and feast, and the phyto feast. All of those liquids from Reef Nutrition are getting dosed into the system on a timed automatic basis several times a day. I think they're getting fed eight or nine times and it's just little amounts. You're not feeding the whole container or two ounces at a time. You're feeding milliliters at a time. Fish are eating, 
trying not to get eaten or looking for a date. That's really their life. Or they're sleeping at night. Fish don't have eyelids. So at night, you'll see them go in here. They'll, they'll live under the rocks. They'll, they'll hole up over here. We've got this great little Midas Blenny. But when they're on the reef, they're eating. That's what they're doing. They're eating all the time. That auto feeder is doing a phenomenal job. Even the fish are hanging out near the auto feeder because it goes off so many times a day. They don't really know when it's going to go off, which is just like it is in the, in the ocean. It's an, they're opportunistic feeders. Sure, you can feed once a day. But what are they doing for seven or eight hours or nine hours while you're at work? Maybe you have a dry food feeder. There's a plethora of really great dry foods too, and I get that. But the anthea sometimes aren't eating that. Some of the other wrasses, the salabrous wrasses and others aren't necessarily eating that food. They really want like tonic food and that's their life in the ocean. They're always out there eating. That's what they're doing. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time on our YouTube channel. Keep sending the questions.